know, we talk a lot about songs that were lightning in a bottle, more known as you know, one-hit wonders, where an artist had a huge hit and then never again. Well, today's song is as iconic as an 80s hit gets. I mean, it's instantly recognizable. It's been played in scores of movies and TV shows. Whenever they're talking about the 80s, it seems like it's played. It's indelibly tied to the neon decade, but it wasn't a hit. Surprisingly, it didn't even make the top 50 in America. It was a remake. Up next, the original lead singer of this 80s classic it gives us the inside scoop about this song. Very interesting. Brought to you by Zenny Iwer. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure to subscribe below to be a part of this community. We are dedicated to the timeless music of the rock and roll era. Videos, interviews, stories, all of it here. Check us out on Patreon as well. Now, I'm excited to, to start a new bottle of lightning. We're gonna share the story of one of the most iconic songs of the 80s. It was uh, actually a remake of an earlier hit song from the 60s. Let's see, how many times was that done in the 80s? Sometimes it happened in the same week. I mean, in the case of Tommy James and Shondells, Tiffany and Billy Idol had a hit with two of his songs in the same week in the top 10, Money Money. And uh, I think we're alone now. Of course, Joan Jett covered Crimson and Clover and took that to the charts earlier. It seemed to be in the water, no matter the genre. I mean, you two covered Helter Skelter for Rattle and Hum. David Lee Roth would take a crack at the Beach Boys California Girls with a music video that matched his mantra. Daryl Hall and John Oates did it with the Righteous Brothers, uh, You've Lost That Love and Feeling. Of course, their usual soulfulness. I mean, it was everywhere. 60s remakes were even really prevalent uh, with new wave bands, which makes sense as this was the music that many of these acts heard when they were children. Motown especially was a big influence on bands coming out of the UK, you know, from ABC to Kajak Goo Goo, Soft Cell, of course, Soft Cell remade Tainted Love. Where did our love go? We covered that earlier. You can find the story of that. Uh, uh, English Beat, they reimagined Smokey's uh, Tears of a Clown. The tears of the clown. Japan actually did a version of I Second That Emotion. Of course, Kim Wilde hit number one with the Supremes, You Keep Me Hanging On in 87, on and on and on. Another new wave band that re-recorded a cover of a 60s hit was actually put together by Sex Pistols manager Malcolm McLaren. McLaren recruited members of Adam and the Ants to form the band Bow Wow Wow. Of course, behind 13-year-old Annabelle Lewin on vocals, and they broke through on mainstream radio in the U.S. with a remake of the 1965 number 11 hit, I Want Candy. Bow Wow Wow was not a one-hit wonder in the U.K., though. They had a top 10 there with Go Wild in the Country in 82 before hitting the top 10 again with I Want Candy a few months later. Honestly, Bow Wow Wow aren't, uh, they're not even a one-hit wonder in America. Because technically, I Want Candy hit number 62 on the Billboard Hot 100. Usually has to be top 40 to uh, be considered a, a, a hit. Of course, it went number 22 on the mainstream rock chart, though. But to be fair, a Bow Wow Wow's I Want Candy is much bigger than its USP chart position. It's an 80s classic and one of the most used songs of the pop culture spectrum. My kids know it. I'll bet that their kids are going to know it. I mean, a remake is one thing, but improving on the original can prove difficult and sometimes even impossible. I mean, just ask anybody who tries to uh, cover the Beatles. But in the case of Bow Wow Wow, they did just that. The iconic uh, Matthew Ash guitar part alone puts it over the top. Add in the Burundi drums of Dave Barbarossa. Uh, the electric bass playing of Lee Gorman, incredible, and of course, Annabella's uh, seductive vocal yelp, and it's over. So sweet, you make my mouth water. 
I don't want to give away the story as I have an exclusive interview with original Bow Wow Wow singer Annabelle Lewin, who will give us the goods. Here's Annabelle. How you were discovered. I love that story because <laughs> the great Malcolm McLaren and they were wanting to put together a band. Tell me the story from your perspective. I was working in a dry cleaners. It's my Saturday job. He got me fired and I was um, just singing to the radio because we had a top 40 countdown. And uh, next thing I know, I went for an audition um, and I had uh, Malcolm wanted to meet my ma mother that same evening. And the rest is, is history, I guess. What song were you singing? Do you remember? Yes, I do. It's I Wish. Really? Looking back on when I was a little nappy headed. I used to love listening to all those kinds of songs because my brothers I had three generations of music to listen to. Pink Floyd, Genesis, Sly and Robbie and Bob Marley's and the other eclectic singers uh, from France, Edith Piaf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I had a lot of, you know, musical inspiration generation-wise from my brothers. Let's talk about I Want Candy, a new wave classic, a song that's been used as much in pop culture as any song out there. And that, of course, put you on the map here in America. That was a remake of the Strange Love song, which, of course, went to number 11 when they had it in 1965. And your version has, of course, become the signature song. How do you remember recording it or, or making the decision to record it? Well, it was actually thanks to Kenny Laguna, the producer, and Richie Cordell, of course, co-produced that with him. But Kenny Laguna was the one that put that suggestion to us to, uh, to do the song. And I, of course, heard it and said, but it's a guy singing about a girl, so I'm going to have to switch the lyrics around. Obviously, it was very simple. It already been written by the, as you said, the amazing songwriting partnership of the Strange Loves, whom I had the pleasure of meeting one of the guys from that partnership. And uh, I was really thrilled to hear it when I first heard it. I remember sitting outside on a terrace in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and hearing a song, and I was going, Who, who's that in the studio singing right now? And that's, well, that's what I remember. And then, of course, they said it was the song I Want Candy that we just recorded. It was the first time I actually heard my voice just singing without going, C30, C60, C90, go! You know, so it was really nice to actually hear a consistent, ah, you know. It was, yeah, it was very nice. Soon I'll make you mine. The way that you approach it vocally, too, as well as when you said at the very end of the, hey! Because that was different yeah. than their version. Well, we were just doing our version because, you know, Bow Wow was very tribal, Latin American. Um, obviously, it was based on the Burundi rhythms and Dave Barbarossa being a brilliant drummer. I worked with some great musicians, of course, uh, Matthew Ashman, who was like the leader um, slash songwriter, as well as the rock star, I think, of the band. He just looked amazing as always, always. <laughs> Even with the mohawk, he looked amazing. He was the first to get that done, by the way. But just amazing musicians. They made it their own, the way they played individually. And then, obviously, together, we made this, the sound that was Bow Wow. Wow. The bass and the guitar, and it just mm -hmm. it had that Gels. edge. And every time you hear that song, it's just joyful. You had a look, though. You were very influential with your look, with the, the mohawk, and that influenced a lot of females that came after yeah, that. But also the cover, of course, was controversial at that oh, time. Oh, you're talking about when the going gets tough, the tough get going, when we had our clothes on, or were you talking about the other <laughs> one, where Dejeuner Sela, where we had, well, I had, well, I had my clothes off. That was based on a painting by Monet, one of the yeah. French painters. Because, you know, Malcolm had just come from Paris. He'd done some work in France, apparently, before... He had been invited by Adam to come and work with him. And uh, from what I gather, from what I've been um, informed over the years. And uh, so I guess that all came about because he, he had a strong connection with art and he just thought it would make a great album cover too. And of course, even though we did it all those years later, it was still considered uh, risque, which was kind of weird. And I was only a teenager when I posed you know, in near the lake in that freezing cold morning. Um, but it was it was amazing to see the actual final picture. It was beautiful. I was yeah. really surprised how, how beautiful the whole yeah the whole um, album cover came out. It's in the Tate Gallery, apparently. Yeah, apparently. Well, on MTV too. That was right at that moment when the music video came out. MTV was taking off. You're very much a part of the birth of MTV and the music video. What do you remember about making the music video? 
Um, I had a lot of fun making that video, I want candy. It was on Venice Beach. It was really cool. We did it at Venice Beach one day and Death Valley the next day. And it was just amazing because the director buried the guys up to their heads in sand, which I thought was fun. You know, he said, dance around the candy sticks, which I tried to do because <laughs> it was really windy that day. It was just a wonderful video to make. And I would love to meet the director of the video today because I don't know what his last name was. I kept calling him Steven Spielberg. I don't know why, but I did. <laughs> so. That's right. <laughs> Been used so much in pop culture. So many different soundtracks, Romy and Michelle's High School Reunion. Oh my God. High Fidelity. But on the fourth afternoon, Kevin Bannister. Slut. The house bunny. Hi, Hats. Hi, girls. <laughs> Hi, Shelly. Looking good. And Marie Antoinette, that was probably pretty cool how they used that wow. in the film. Yeah, what a pleasure and a privilege to have that used by uh, Sophia Ford Coppola. And um, they did a great job of putting it in the movie. And thank you for, very much for, for using the song. Black Eyed Peas, of course, sampled it, and that introduced it to a new generation. Video games, with Horror Hero, of course. Really? Yeah. Okay. I want to see it used in a program like Spitting Image or even South Park. I'm about all that kind of stuff. <laughs> the new generation. Well, got used in The Simpsons. If they're still doing this in 10 years, I'll be really happy. Yeah. <laughs> they got used in The Simpsons. It was also, when we did it live, it just had a really amazing vibration. It was very positive. And everyone just immediately, like, just their, their spirits just lifted. And that's why it's always such a pleasure yeah. for me to still be able to perform that after 30 years something years um, <laughs> on stage. I hope it still comes across the same way. I love singing. I love playing to the audiences. and. And, and I just, um, I just want to keep going forward and, and doing some new stuff and working with some, you know, new people too along the way. And, and hopefully the, the, the stuff I'm writing today and hopefully in the future will also uh, resonate in, in, in years to come. Thank you so much for watching. Do leave us a comment about this undeniable classic. It's just a feel good song, you know. What are some other great one-hit wonders that you think that we ought to cover on this show? Tell us in the comments. To hear this song, you can click on the playlist below. To get some great music, including one-hit wonders, click on our Amazon links below. And if you enjoy our content, we would love to have you as a subscriber. Hit the bell so you never miss out. We're always making great content. Uh, also, make sure to click on our Patreon for more content and to become a real supporter of this cause. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.